Hello and welcome to the Ladies in Waiting podcast. We are so glad that you are here with us today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And today we are doing um, a fantastic topic. It's something that we feel like we know, but when we really think about it, do we really know it as much as we think we do? So today we are going to be talking about the importance of daily worship, Amen. right? The yes. importance of daily worship. And so before we get into the actual discussion, the pod class, uh, you know what we always do. We, number one, always love to start with prayer, inviting the Holy Spirit into this discussion. And then, of course, Christy always lets us know what we're going to need in order to be successful as far as studying and gleaning everything that we need to glean from the pod class. So let's go ahead and start today with a word of prayer. Amen. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to learn of you, to learn from you, to learn about you, and to learn more about your word. Yes. We thank you, Father God, for every person that made the sacrifice to take the time out of their busy schedule to join us and listen to this pod class and to learn from this pod class. We ask that whatever it is that they need to get from this pod class, including Christy and myself, that yes. you bless us as you see fit. We ask that there will be no distractions during this listening and learning time. We pray that it's all about you, that it's all for you, and that you get glory and that everything that comes from this pod class is for our good. In yes. Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen. 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 So Christy, right. you always let us know what we need for the learning journey. So what we need, girl. All right. So the first thing that you're going to need, of course, is the Word of God. Yes. Bible. Uh, today I've got my Tony Evans Study Bible. I'm also using the uh, Bible versions on my phone. So it can be a real version. It can be the hard copy version of the Bible. It can be on your phone but or on your computer. So you need your Bible. And he's got the Life Application Bible. She's showing us. All right. You need your Bible. You need something to write with. So it can be a pencil, pen, marker. Your phone again, computer, and something to write on, which is, like I say, it could be a piece of paper, computer, phone, whatever you need to take notes with so you can record the notes from the pod class and whatever insights the Lord gives you. So your Bible, something to write with and something to write on. All right. Well, we want to make sure you take time to go get those things. But if you've been listening with us for any amount of time, I bet you came prepared. I bet before you pressed <laughs> play, you already had those items that Christy listed that you need in order to truly treat this episode as a pod class, not just a podcast, but a pod class. And so what are we learning about today? Today, it is all about worship. Yes. We'll be talking about what is worship? Why should we do it daily? How can we do it daily? So we're going to definitely start off by breaking down what exactly worship is. And I think it's funny because there's there's lots of terms, especially if we've been walking with the Lord for a while, that we feel like we just know. Yeah, we know what worship is. But when you really think about it, do we really know what worship is? Could we really give someone a definition, mm. let's say someone new to, you know, the Christian faith, could we really give them a succinct definition of what worship is? So Christy, when you think about worship, what comes to mind? Um, well, I think about worship because you are right, because, you know, to be put on, if you're put on the spot somewhere, it'd be yeah. hard for you to articulate, hard for you mm -hmm. to kind of like find all the words to put together to like, what is worship? But I just always think about it like, I'm totally focused on the Lord. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, recognizing him and glorifying him for just mm -hmm. who he is. Yes. You know, not what he's done, um, but really, truly, you know, spending time just, you know, focusing on appreciating, mm -hmm. recognizing him and giving him glory for just who he is. Yes. That's what I would consider worship. So like, what about you? Like, what do you, when, you know, if someone asked you, you know, what is worship, you know, what would you, mm -hmm. uh, what is worship to you? 
I think that um, for me, it truly is the the word is focus. It is focused, being focused with my mind, being focused mm. with my body, being focused with my money, being focused with my words, mm. being focused with my service, being focused with my actions, being focused on him Amen. and him alone. Or, mm. you know, so that's why if I really had to boil it down to one thing, it is focus. But mm. at the core of that focus or why I choose to focus on him or whatever it is that the the subject is, is worshiping, it the reason why or the purpose why comes from a place of, of gratitude, mm. a place of adoration, yes, a place of love, a place of sacrifice, and a place of surrender. Mm, hey man and so you know I, I, I that's really what I think about when I think about worship but you know um Christy and I we we love to read we love to you know just to <laughs> study the word and so we came across an article from um the gospel coalition a few days mm. ago and the writer was anonymous they chose not to really say who they were but they they shared some quotes from other people, including themselves, of what they said worship is. And I love one that the writer shared from Lou Giglio. Uh, when Lou Giglio was asked, what is worship? He said, worship is our response, both personal and corporate, to God for who he is and what he has done, expressed in and by the things we say and the way we live. I love that definition, you know, yeah. because it speaks to, you know, when we think about worship, we often think about a church. Yes. A synagogue. Worship. Yes. A temple. We're thinking about, you know, this corporate worship in this place where worship mm -hmm. takes place. But his definition, and even what you said, Christy, it really boils down to, it doesn't matter where I am. It's my response to who God is and what he has done. And I express it in what I say and I express it in how I live. So it happens no matter where we are as yes, we dude. live this life on earth. And, and I just love that definition. And the anonymous author himself, he gave his own definition of worship. And he said, or she, we don't know if it's a he or a she. Mm -hmm. um, worship is the response of the whole being heart, soul, mind, strength to beholding God's glory. Like you said, Christy, mm. it is enabled by the Holy Spirit. It is fixated on gospel truth. It is directed by God's self-revealing word. It involves personal and corporate expressions and human beings are hardwired for worship. Thus, worship of someone or something is inevitable. But the worship that pleases God, worship that proceeds from a heart that sees and loves him, is only possible by the saving work of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Whew. I mean, honestly, that right there is, you have to really, I mean, that <laughs> that statement right there, those sentences put together, Yeah, it's, you have to sit with that. It's almost like if you had a book and you were reading those words, you have to close the book because you're like, you know what? I need time to process that because especially that first line, especially that first part, Andy, when you said worship is the response of the whole being heart soul mind and strength to mm. beholding god's glory and so mm. that's everything that you are absolutely i mm. mean everything that you are your heart mm. your mind your soul and your strength that's everything Ooh. that you're that's 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 in the essence you and so what he's saying is it's it's your entire being and like you were saying too and when you were reading earlier it's what you say and what you live come on and so if it's everything that you are, so in, in reality, some part of us is worshiping God all, should be worshiping God all day. Mm. Because if it's true, mm. if it's about your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength with yes. the things that you say 
and how you live your life, that's your entire day. That's what you do every single day. You're speaking, you're mm. doing things, Come on. Uh, you're living your life, Come you're on. thinking certain things, you're saying certain words, you're having actions that show how you're, you know, how you're conducting yourself in your life. It all should reflect Christ is focused on the Lord. And that's that right there was deep about the heart, soul, mind, and the strength. Mm. And what you say and how you live. That's everything. That's ex that's in essence who you are. You know, Christy, I, 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 like you said, I'm processing this as we read it aloud and we spoke yes. the pieces of it aloud. And and what as as we were saying that, as you were, you know, just really breaking it down, God also put on my heart. That's why the enemy works no, I, you, so hard. You're in my brain. So hard to distract our hearts, to distract our soul, yes. to distract our minds and to distract our strength because he is jealous of God and he yes. wants our mind. He wants our heart. He wants our soul. He wants our strength. And when we use those things to focus on something, that is worship. And so he will do everything that he can to distract us from using our heart to worship God, from using our soul to worship God, to using all of our mind to worshiping God, all of our strength. God deserves all of it. My whole heart, my whole soul, my whole mind, my whole strength. But that is why the enemy tries so hard to distract us. Mm. It's, it's not to make us have a bad day. It's to keep us from worshiping God and keep us from, because worship helps you build and grow your relationship with God on top of so many other things. And, and the part that I loved about this right here, Christy, at the end, when he said, you know, human beings are hard, hardwired for worship. Yes. You, made to, you are made to worship. I was created to make his praise glorious. Yes. You were created to worship him. I was created to worship him or to worship. I'm hardwired for that. And if I'm not worshiping him, I'm worshiping somebody else or something or else. something else. Or so, something else. So, so, so we got to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Because if we notice we're spending more time on social media than we are corporately going to church to worship, using private time to worship the Lord, to focus on him with our entire being, our words and our life, as you said, Christy. On then that tells me I'm worshiping social media more than I am the Lord. Yes. If I am so fixated, I'm missing church. I'm not spending quality time with the Lord because I'm too busy, you know, ripping and running, taking my kids to and fro and everywhere. Maybe I'm worshiping my children. Ooh. Come on. If I want to just lay up with my husband all day and all Sunday and we just want to lay up and we miss church and we ain't praying together and we ain't worshiping together, maybe I worship my husband Come more than I worship my God. On We got to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. And the way to do it is right in here where it says, you know, worship is the response of the whole being, heart soul, mind, strength, to beholding God's glory. And I love how he says, but the worship that pleases God, worship that proceeds from a heart that sees and loves God. If you still have scales on your eyes, you can't see God. Yeah, you can't. Mm. And you can't worship him if you can't see him with your heart. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot worship him truly if you cannot see him with your heart, if you do not love him with your heart. If you don't love him with your heart, your worship ain't real. Mm. You can be mad at me all you want to, but I'm going to say this. If you do not love him with your heart, and if you do not see him with your heart, your worship ain't real. Mm. And I'm not judging anybody. I'm speaking to myself. Yeah. But I know that I love him. And I know that I see him with my heart. And so I know what is due. I know what is required of me. 
And I love that it's broken down so much here in both of those definitions that, you know, I need to respond both personally and corporately to who uh, God is, what he's done and expressions in the things that I say and the way that I live. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. That, I mean, yeah, that's a, I still need to process moment because I mean, because in essence, really what you've said is, you know, whatever you are focused on more than God that takes away from your worship of him is your idol. You know, an idol is anything that's not God. Come on. And so that's what you said in essence. I mean, which is the truth, honestly, like, I, I, you know what? I be real. I mean, if I'm thinking about more of the fact that I don't feel good, uh, more than Christ, well, that's what I'm focused on. And it's not to negate, you know, illness or going through seasons where you need healing. Mm -hmm. That's not to negate that because, you know, and I'm not someone who's just talking about this and not from a perspective of what I know. Right. I know about this. Come on. So speak, Christy. I'm speaking this to myself. Come so on. if I am, if you are going through seasons where it seems like you're having back to back stuff of like, you're sick with this. Come on. Next thing is that then it's this again. And it seems like you're in the cycle or it's taking you a while to get over something or you feel like you're always sick sometimes or you're needing mm -hmm. healing. Number one, healing is coming. And number two, what's going on oh, is yeah. if you are spending so much time thinking about and focusing on like, I'm about to get sick again. Cause I'll be honest with you. I've been sick back to back to back to back to back to back. And even right now, I'm getting over the sinus infection. Even now, I'm over here thinking about, well, what if I'm the antibiotics I'm taking? What if I get thrush? Uh, what if I, uh, uh, what if I mess my, my stomach again? Then I go back to my stomach hurting. And then I go, I had to shut all that stinking thinking down. Amen. Because what that means is I'm thinking more about what's going on in my physical body more than I am from Christ. Come I on. am on Christ. And Preach. so anything that I'm thinking about more than Christ Come is on. an idol. Come on, teach. That's Christy. what I'm worshiping. Come on. And so if I'm worshiping, talking about my illness, thinking about my illness, not to negate it, let me be clear. You're not saying that you're not sick when you are sick. Right. Lord, this is what I got going on. I know that you are going to heal me and I need to focus on you while I'm going through my process of healing. It is a hard walk. Come on. And he is with you. But that yeah. piece right there, whatever you're thinking, that whatever you're doing more than Christ, you're worshiping that thing, then that thing's going to get glory. Come on. Woo. And like you said, it's what the enemy wants. He mm. wants focus off of Christ onto whatever else. So, woo. yeah, I got you. I mean, we, I mean, we could stop the pod class right there. I yeah. mean, just with the what is worship. And yes. I really feel like after that, thank you so much, Christy. I feel like I have such a better understanding and a clarity of what worship is and what it should be. Yes. Who we should be worshiping, you know, making it very clear. Um, yet with that, why should we worship God? We know what worship is, but yes. why? And we know we're high, hardwired. We're created to worship. But why should we worship God? <laughs> because we were created to and he told us to <laughs> <laughs> make it play it's that's gonna make number it play. one reason i mean because he told us to uh the lord told us to worship him yes and yes. and honestly that's what we're created to do we were mm -hmm. created to bring him glory absolutely hallelujah <laughs> and we want to pull out a scripture um we can pull out psalm 150 chapter okay. 50 uh, chapter 150, verse 6. So Psalm 150, okay. verse 6. Psalm 150, verse 6. You know, I'm using I'm using hard copy, so I'm kind of... That's okay. Agreement. I got my hard copy right here, too. That's all I'm right. I'm ready. Psalm 150 and 6. Yes. Andy, go ahead. You got that open right there. That's right. I got the New Living Translation. Uh, Let everything that breathes sing praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that sums it up. I mean, Psalm 150 mm -hmm. and 6, everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
we were created to and commanded to praise him. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. And, you know, in a little, as we're, as we're continuing on going past this, I mean, you know, number one, you know, because he said to, mm-hmm. you'll start to see the why mm-hmm. he told us to as mm-hmm. we continue on. So yes, the first one mm-hmm. is because he told us to let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And And think about that, Christy, you know, Animals have breath, you know, mm. everything that hath breath, praise ye the Lord. <laughs> I'm not going to let a rooster outcrow me with worship. Yeah. I'm not going to let a dog outbark me <laughs> with worship. But it says everything that hath breath. Praise ye the Lord. It's a command. We're talking to, we're created to. That right there definitely just reminds me of the, like you said, the most basic why. We could stop there, but we can keep going too. <laughs> Let's go and keep going. You know, we on the road with Jesus today. Let's keep we going. We are. We are. <laughs> I mean, you know, also too, like the second, you know, other than, you know, he told us to, the mm-hmm. second reason is because it really shows and declares our surrender to him. And that's what it's really all about, Chris. It is. It is. I mean, worshiping him shows that we are focused on mm-hmm. him, that we are surrendered to yes. him, that we are dependent, completely dependent on him. Amen. 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 You know, you can't worship something or someone that you do not submit control to. Mm. Yes. Just, I mean, that's part of the worship process is that you are submitting control. Yes. You know, I'm lifting my hands up and surrender to you, yes. Lord, in worship. You know, um, it, it truly is about surrendering to his rule over our lives. That's a huge part. And it so is. if if you're not ready, I'm just I'm, I'm just being real today. OK. If you are not ready to surrender your life to the Lord, then your worship is not complete. Your worship Mm. of him cannot be complete. It cannot be total worship. It can't be total praise until you surrender your life to him. If you have not surrendered your life to him, please take the opportunity it's simply a put your hands in the air. Maybe you want to re-surrender yourself to the Lord. Mm, Lord, I yes. surrender my life unto you. Lord, Lord I, my life I you. give my life to you. I yes, surrender Lord. to your rule over my life. And watch yes. your worship change. Yes. Watch your worship take on a whole new depth of yes. realness and truthfulness that you've never experienced before when you truly, truly surrender. Hands up. <laughs> right yeah to the lord amen amen mm-hmm. we do have a scripture for that uh andy what's that scripture we got down there uh we've got isaiah 64 and 8 isaiah yes, 64 and 8 and i really want to look it up i'm gonna go ahead in here i got it in my notes but i want to look it up and see what the new living says christy what what about yours what does yours say isaiah 64 and 8 and what and translation are you reading from i think the okay. article is uh niv and i've also got my csb bible here too yeah and let's, so let's read that so um it says isaiah 64 and 8 says but now O lord you are our father we are the clay and you are the potter and all of us are the work of your hand. Mm. We are created. We are created by him. I mean, and I like the fact that it talks about we are the clay and you are the potter. And so yes. that, you know, that shows, you know, complete surrender. I mean, really, you know, you're being shaped and mm. molded to how he sees fit. Yeah. For life. And that really is surrender, honestly, if you think about it. And the what clay is, re- well, and the clay is reliant upon yes. you know, the potter. Yes. Without the potter, it has no purpose. It, yes. ha- it does not, you know, become what is created to be. Um, same thing. You know, he is the potter. We are the clay. We are in his hands. We are yes. surrendered to him. And he is molding us daily into the image of Christ. 
and he's caring for us. Yes. And helping us truly live out our purpose. And so with that, you know, all we can do is put ourselves in his hands and trust and surrender our lives to him, knowing that he can take better care of us than we can ourselves. Amen. He sure can. Amen. Amen. And mine's very similar. Like I said, uh, New Living Translation. And yet, oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We all are formed by your hand. Amen. All right. So, I mean, definitely, like I said, that surrender piece is huge. But even on top of that, I know one thing I love about worship is when I am feeling distracted, when I am pulled in all types of different directions and I feel confused and I need clarity and I'm all over the place. Yes. When I stop and worship God, it realigns my focus and it always helps me to fix my eyes on Jesus. Mm. It gets my eyes off the circumstance. It gets my mind off the situation. Yes. It helps. And when I just stop in that moment, I don't have to wait till Sunday and go to church. Yes. I can stop right then where I at and just start worshiping God. And it just realigns everything for me. And helps me focus once again on what and who really matters. It's God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy spirit. Amen. Amen. And I know we have a a scripture for that too. I'm looking at, um, let's see. John 4, 24. Okay. John 4 and 24. All right. Page through as well. Okay. John 4, 24. Let's see. All right. Um, I've got the CSB Bible. Okay. And it says, God and God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Oh. Oh. And so that goes back to what you were saying about, you know, being, you know, keeps us focused on him, keeps us focused on who he mm-hmm. is and the truth of who he is you know he amen. is god amen period. the amen. one true god all by himself and that can and the fact that you know what's the song say you know <laughs> uh the song what is it i am god all by myself mm-hmm. i don't need <laughs> any help i can handle things <laughs> all on my own i'm the first i am the last come on Whatever break it down need, just ask because that truly focuses on who he is. Amen. He's like, Christy. I got everything you need. <laughs> I'm the one true God. Come on. I'm the first and the last. <laughs> Whatever you need, just ask me. I got you. <laughs> and so worshiping him keeps us focused on that piece right there. Amen. Of who he truly is. And honestly, you know, if you're not sure about who he is, that's okay. You have the greatest resource at the tip of your fingertips uh-huh. is his word. Absolutely. His word tells who he is. And so if you're wanting to know more, but even if you already know who he is and uh-huh. want to have a closer relationship with him, a closer walk with him and know more of who he is, I'm telling you, you could read the same verses over and over again, read the same and he will reveal new truth to you about who he is, his character. Uh And so he is found in his word, but he says it right there. I'm it. I got you. I love you. I'm here for you. I got your back. Yes. If you need something, just ask me. I am the alpha. I am the omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the first and I am the last. Yes. Come on. Break it down. All of those things. He's got us. He is the creator of the universe. Hallelujah. And so, Andy, what you're saying too about, you know, just it makes us focused Uh on him. Uh That's how he helps us focus is to rely on and remember who he truly is. And so I love that one. Well, I love that too. And, and, And just thinking over my life and some of the things that I've noticed that has happened when I worship, mm. I, I can tell you that's part of, of why to worship God too. 
Because one thing that I've experienced is that when I worship God, I've experienced him taking sickness away from me. Come on. In the midst of worship, after my worship, you know, in between worships, I've seen him literally take sickness away from me. Now that's my experience, but I'm going to tell you the word says that that's what will occur if we go to Exodus 23 yes, and 25. So you can, you know, you can take my testimony, but I want you to know that it lines up with the word of the Lord. Exodus 23 and 25. So we got to go back to the Old Testament. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> At the beginning, Exodus 23 and 25. Christy, what does yours, uh, what you say, CSB? What's CSB yes. say? Uh, Exodus 23 and 25. Let's see. Oh, okay. Um, Serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water. I will remove illnesses from you. Mm. I mean, drop the mic. <laughs> I think that'd be clearer than that. I'll remove illnesses from you, period. Periods, period. period. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you. Mm. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and your water. I will take away sickness from among you. Mm. When you Amen. worship the Lord, if you are sick, don't yes. focus on the sickness. Focus on Ooh. God. Focus yes, on the healer of the sickness. I hear your words. God, focus on him. Don't focus on the illness and the sickness. When all you do is think about how you're feeling in that yes. moment and think about the sickness, you're worshiping the sickness. Yes. You're Ouch. Your yes. focus to the sickness. That doesn't mean you pretend you're not sick. It just means in the midst of not feeling well, you still give him the glory. Yes, Lord. You still give him the honor, the praise, the worship. Hallelujah. Does that mean you go to church sick? Maybe, maybe not. God can tell you what's best for you. But yes. even if you need to stay home, you can still worship him. Yes. You can worship him in the hospital. You can worship him in the bed. You can worship him when you are laid out sick in the bathroom. Yes. If you Lord. will start worshiping him, I will tell you, he will lift that oh, thing. Yeah. It may not happen today. It may not happen tomorrow. It may take some time, as Christy said earlier, from her personal experience. But I'm telling you, he will heal you of your sickness. Yes, he will. Because he's a healer. Yes. That's what he does. Yes. That's who he is. That doesn't change. He will heal you. Yes. If you will just yet worship him and give him yes, the Lord. glory in the midst of your sickness. Yes, Lord. I hear Come you. on, Jesus. Yes. Ooh. Speak, Lord. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. You know, indeed, you know, you talked about, you know, how, you know, your personal experience, you know, as far as, you know, you know, worshiping him, uh, worshiping and taking sickness away from you. Yes. Something else that worship does is, I know, um, it cultivates joy. It brings mm -hmm. joy to you. Yes, yes. Because once again, I mean, think about it. In the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. Come on. And so Come you're on. focused on, you're in his presence when you're worshiping yes. him. Uh -huh. uh, you're focused on him and in his presence. And actually, that's the verse. So That is the, that is the actual <laughs> I was verse, having to look it down at the verse. <laughs> that is the verse for this. It's perfect. Come it's, on, girl. Uh, Psalm 16 and 11. Okay. It says, you make known to me the path of life. Mm. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Mm. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone that's been in the presence of the Lord, mm. when you're sitting at his feet, when you're in prayer, when you're just focused and worshiping him or you're praying to him, you're in his presence. And there's joy. Come on. He says, you know, in your presence, there is fullness of joy, not just ha not happiness, joy mm -hmm. and the fullness of joy, the Hallelujah. fullness of his presence. And so that right there, you know, if you're dealing with uh, depression, mm -hmm. 
or heaviness in mm -hmm. his presence is fullness of joy. Start worshiping him. Mm -hmm. Come on. And you will feel a lightning. I have a, a lightning of your spirit. I've been, yes. Because one thing that, you know, also too, and I know India sometimes goes through it too, is yes. winter blues. Yes. There's less sun. You know, not much sunlight. It seems dark it gets darker quicker. And that sometimes does something to you. It can do something mm -hmm. to you as far as your mood. Um, and so you really have to be more intentional about your worship mm -hmm. during certain seasons of your life. And if you're someone that suffers from winter blues, mm -hmm. worship him. Absolutely. Put on some praise music. Absolutely. Sit in his presence and just being with him. Yes. Brings you that joy. Yes. Hallelujah. Because it says in his presence is fullness of joy. of joy. Fullness. Yes. So if you're not having fullness of joy. Yes. The, 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 as Christy said, we have to be intentional. Mm. And so I can be in the room with somebody, but not be in their presence. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I can be sitting in a room with somebody, but I'm not engaging with them. I'm not present with them. But same thing with God. I can, I know he's with me, but am I with him? When you get with the Lord and get, you get present with the Lord, in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. So if you need a fullness of joy right now, get in his presence. How do you get in his presence? You pray, you sing, you thank, give thanksgiving, you praise him, and all that is worship. All of those things are components of worship. Hey, man. Uh, yeah. Sorry, y'all. I had to go on mute because uh, I'm blowing out all this mess in my sinuses. Come on. Come on. Look at the <laughs> Lord. Look at the Lord, Christy. Come on. In the midst of the of the worship. Because I was sitting here God. thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to try to make it through the pod <laughs> class and not blow. But I'm like, I got gunk building up. I'm like, come I'm getting, on. I was like, it's trying to come out. I'm like, I need to go ahead and blow this out. That's right. Let the Lord do his work, Christy. As we said, sickness yes. can leave you. God will literally take sickness away from you in the midst of worship. And we are doing that even as we're learning about worship. We are worshiping him by what we choose to learn. Come on now. Mm, come on, Jesus. Woo, come you, on. Lord. And so just to reiterate, if you are in having dark moments, you got those winter blues, you need more joy in your life. Yes. Get in his presence. Because in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. And yes. in his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So how do you get into his presence? Worship him. Worship him. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> it's, um, I'm going to tell you, when you truly worship him, it's hard to not have joy. When Amen. you think of the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for you, my soul shall cry out. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you think of everything he's done for you, Yes. Instead of thinking about the one thing maybe that ain't happened yet, mm, when you come, think about all the things he's done on. for you, hallelujah, you can't do nothing but start worshiping. And when you worship, hallelujah. it's hard to not have joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. And I'm telling you, Christy, not only can he take sickness away from you as you worship and, and, and give you and cultivate joy in your heart through worship, but let me tell you something. If you're going through a battle, if you're going yes, through a war, yes, yes. worship positions you for warfare and worship silences the voice of the enemy. Yes, it does. The enemy's been in your ear. He's been whispering stuff, messing with your heart, messing with your mind and your thoughts, messing with your emotions. You're feeling all over the place. Start worshiping the Lord. Yes. Because worship of the Lord silences the enemy. He's got to shut up and he's got to be still. And he's got to back up off of you to let you do what you were created to do, which is not to worship him, but to worship the Lord, the one and only true living God. That's who we were created to worship. Yes. That's what we were Hallelujah. created to do. Hallelujah. And so when you start worshiping the Lord, he has to shut up and leave you alone. Hallelujah. So if you've been tormented in your mind by the enemy, if you're being tormented in your heart or in your emotions and you know it feels like it's something outside of you, yes. start worshiping the Lord right now. 
right now. Stop what you're doing and worship the Lord and the enemy. His Ooh. voice will be silenced. He has to shut up. Yes. He has to so that you can do what you were created to do, which is to worship the Lord and the Lord God alone. Hallelujah. 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 You want to see an example from the Bible? You want to see a Bible example? Let's go to 2 Chronicles 20 and 22. Yes. 2 Chronicles 20 and 22. Woo! Jesus, what are you doing? What are you doing? 2 Chronicles 20 and 22. Christy, you got that one? Yes, I do. All right, let's go. All right, 2 Chronicles 20 and 22. The moment... Mm. They began their shouts and praises. The Lord set an ambush against the Ammonites, Moabites, and the inhabitants of Mount Seir who came to fight against Judah, and they were defeated. The moment they began their shouts and praises. That's in the CSB. And the other one I was looking at says, and when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set an ambush. The moment Come on, Jesus. Like India said, when you're in the battle, start with worship. Woo! And like I said, there's nothing that testifies more than the word of God himself. <laughs> I mean, right there. You know, we have our own personal testimonies with it, and the word the word backs it up right there. The moment <laughs> they began, I said, I'm going back to, I'm sorry, I'm in the CSB, and that's what it did to me. I'm, I'm laughing because it says, <laughs> the moment. Not like later. But it's just like, bam, the moment they began their shouts and praises, the Lord set an ambush pretty much against their enemies. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a drop the mic moment, throw a pencil across the room moment, you know, whatever it is that you need to do <laughs> to marinate on that. <laughs> hey, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I, I know to. also is too, during this podcast, pod class, my whole right nostril was clogged. And when I put myself on mute and had to blow, now it's not. So <laughs> we're going to it one nostril at a time. I'm like, okay, Lord, let's go. Y'all gonna make me run around this here office. Y'all gonna make me take a run today. Woo! Woo! What you yes. say, Christy? When did it happen? The moment. <laughs> the moment they began their shouts and praises. Uh, don't the wait at an ambush. Woo, come on, y'all. Let's not wait another minute. Yes. Come on, Jesus. Woo, worship the Lord. Worship him. The moment. The moment. <laughs> come on, Jesus. Woo, we can stay right there. But you know, that speaking also of not just, you know, the warfare and silencing the voice of the enemy when we worship. Worship can also lead to the deliverance yes, or lead to bondage. And, mm -hmm. you know, another example that I love that really speaks to how worship can precede your deliverance from bondage, whatever that bondage might be. I think about Paul and Silas. Yes, there we go. When they were uh, imprisoned, right? Um, yes. Let's go to Acts 16, 25 through 26, so we can um, read about that account. Acts 16, 25, and 26. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Acts 16. Christy, you got it? Uh, let's see. 16, 25, mm -hmm. and 26. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Oh. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the jail were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains came loose. Come on, Jesus. That is a definite, yeah, that right there. Paul and Silas in jail. I mean, in physical jail, in bondage, chained up. Come on, come on. And they just started praying uh -uh. and singing hymns to God. And there was an earthquake that shook the foundations of the prison so much uh -huh. 
all Come the on. doors were open. Come on. And everyone's bonds were unfastened. For everybody. For everybody. Not just Paul, not just Silas, but even the folks that were listening to their worship. Yes. The people around them. It was for God's glory. Paul yes. and Silas is good, but yes. also the good of those around their worship. Yes. Your worship don't even just benefit and bless you. It blesses the people. Come on. Jew. Come on and look at this. It said, I'm going to read from the, uh, in the, uh, from the New Living Translation, and I'm going to come on down here uh, to verse 29, but it says, turn with 25, around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake, and the prison was shaken to its foundations. All the doors immediately flew open, and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer woke up, woke up to see the prison doors wide open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Your worship could lead to somebody else's salvation. The Jesus. biggest bondage that we are in is sin yeah the biggest bondage that we have is sin but look at how our worship can not only precede our own deliverance from our bondages but it can also lead to someone else's deliverance from the bondage of sin where they see your worship and the result of your worship and then they say what must i do to be saved yes come on jesus your true and real worship to the real and true God can lead to not only your deliverance, whatever your bondage might be in the moment, but also to someone else's salvation Yes, and deliverance from a life lived in bondage to sin without the saving grace of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm. That's why corporate worship and private worship are both necessary. And you're about to slide right into the next topic, Indy. Come on with it. Come yes, on, Christy. Yes, yes. We talked about what is worship. You know, what it is. We talked about, you know, why we should worship and the benefits that come from that in our lives yeah. about why we should worship. Now, how? Right. I mean, you just spoke about, you know, a huge piece of it, corporate worship. Mm -hmm. You know, do not forsake the assembly of believers. Come on. You know, worshiping with other people is important yes because and as you saw from what you just read and i mean indy you read it right there in acts what we just saw right there is that came from corporate worship yes it started with you know paul and silas they're in prison they got people around them <laughs> they all started you know they were listening just by yes. listening just by being there yes chains were loosed mm. the jailer was saved <laughs> i mean there's a whole lot going on in these like four verses and so corporate worship is important. Yes. Being with other believers, being in the house of believers or with a ministry group, you know, maybe you have, you know, like LIW, mm -hmm. you know, worshiping with other believers, you know, yes. worshiping, you know, you can, uh, but just have some place and somewhere. Yes. To go where you can worship with other like-minded individuals in spirit yes. and in truth. Yes. Because as we see the benefits of corporate worship, it's powerful. Yes. It's not just about what you're going through. It's about how the, it affects those around you. Yes. The benefits to those around you. You got somebody who was saved as a result of Paul and mm -hmm. Silas being locked up, them praising, chains breaking off. And he's talking about what can I do to be saved? Mm. So that's important is, the, is corporate worship is extremely important. You yes. know, singing songs together, lifting praises up together, mm -hmm. worshiping God together. And also, too, you know, Dee brought up a point, you know, it's important to have corporate worship, but also personal worship. Yes. Because the purpose of the, you know, our podcast is uh, the title of our podcast is the importance of daily worship. So yes. how can you, how can we incorporate mm -hmm. worship into our daily lives? And I know, Indy, you've got some, we've got some points here. Yes. You want to just kind of give us some of those as far as, you know, how can you incorporate um, worship in your daily life? 
Absolutely. You know, I think it really goes back to where we started with that Luke Giglio, you know, definition of worship, mm -hmm. where he said your words and your life, how you live your life yes. and what you speak, what you say. Yes. Um, and so honestly, if we really make it, I love your word you use today, intentional, if we're very <laughs> intentional about, I want my words to glorify God. I want my words to worship God. We can use every conversation as an opportunity to worship just mm. by what we say. Honestly, how we live our life. We want our life to be a testimony to our relationship with God. And we want to worship him through our service and how we live our lives. Just who we choose to give our energy to what we choose to give our energy to what we yes. use, choose to use the resource of time and money toward. Yes in our daily lives can be an act of worship for him. You know, the type of music we listen to, you know, just having a playlist of songs that, you know, truly worship and praise and, and thank the Lord that you can play in the car when you go place to place or in your office or, yes. you know, wherever you are. Um, and not just when you're listening to it, but also maybe, you know, with your family, you know, mm -hmm. as they're in the car with you, they can also join in on the worship. It's hard to not sing a good old worship song. I know that's right. Um, so just singing, you know, while you're washing the dishes, you know, um, uh, having a daily devotional time, starting your day off where you have prayer and, and singing or listening yes. to praise yes. music, writing out scriptures, reading scriptures scriptures, you know, writing out words of praise and thanksgiving to God, you know, that right there is definitely a way, you know, yes. if you play an instrument, you know, learning some worship songs and worshiping the Lord, you know, it's funny, my son plays clarinet and uh, in his school marching band. And, you know, I didn't even really have a big clue about it, but he was up there on, in, on Sunday opening worship, playing Amazing Grace on his clarinet. You know, Amen. Oh, you know on, so just seeing how even those things that we do, you know, in school or on work, but then taking that and also using that instrument, whether that instrument is your writing, mm. <laughs> maybe your instrument is your voice, whether you sing or you speak or you mm. write, you know, whatever it is, using that to glorify God and to worship him. Um, but like I said, every moment, every conversation, every opportunity to give your talents, your time, your money, your energy. Um, yes. We can use that if we will keep God at the heart of it as an act of worship. Amen. I mean, you just beautifully summed up and brought together all the pieces for me at the beginning of how we started talking about what worship is, you know, why we should worship, how to worship, and that, you know, that piece about the totality. Yes. Um, you know, you went back to, you know, it's how we live. Mm -hmm. It's what we say, you know, using the gifts and talents God has given us to, yes. you know, worship him, being intentional and focused. And so, yeah, I thank God for this, you know, Hallelujah. this pod class, honestly, because, you know, what you all, I know you've all probably hear like, you know, feel like, you know, Indy and I are, uh, beating the same drum because we say this all the time but truly i mean mm -hmm. we have a topic we you know for the pod class that we do and the lord will give us some anchor you know scriptures or articles to focus mm -hmm. on and sometimes we're more you know we have more background work to do before we do the pod class other times like today mm -hmm. he'll give us two articles yeah and um the rest is him truly and just know also too this is not just about us teaching yes. you. It's about us speaking to ourselves too. I mean, it <laughs> truly, truly, I mean, as we speak, the reason we're sometimes so, pa we're, you know, we're so passionate and yes. excited is because we're, we'll be having words coming out of our mouths <laughs> and like, whoa, that's a revelation. And it speaks directly to a particular situation yes. we may be in. Yes. Or it's revelation just to us of like, wow, Lord, that is phenomenal. Yes. And so, you know, we just appreciate you so much for joining us on this journey because it really is a journey. It's not, you know, 
us teaching and not getting anything out of it. It's truly God teaching all of us. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Simultaneously. And that is so powerful to know, you know, as you're talking about the Lord mm-hmm. and he just gives you new stuff as you're Hallelujah. speaking it. Because I'll be honest with you, there are times I've gone back to listen to some of our pod class. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to lie. I won't even remember saying some of the stuff I said. <laughs> and I won't even know where that came from. Like, I remember things that, you know, more so what someone else says. Like, I remember things that India said. I don't remember stuff that came out of my own mouth. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't remember that. You know what? I'm like, that was good. That's the Lord. He is just so that good. He gives you new revelations Hallelujah. all the time. Hallelujah. And so we just thank you. We just thank you so much for those of you listening, for joining yes. us on this journey, because it truly Hallelujah. has been and is a journey. You know, God is truly teaching all of us, is with all of us. And so, yeah, it's just phenomenal. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Absolutely. And as Christy said, we do want to give a shout out to the Fruitful Vine Woman Ministry. Yes. Uh, it was an article that we read from uh, from their website that really spoke to us. It was speaking about, you know, just worship from a biblical woman perspective. Um, but it really inspired us to really just think about what is worship? Why should we worship and how can we do it on a daily basis? So shout out definitely to, um, as we said before, Gospel Coalition and also the Fruitful Vine Woman Ministry for truly inspiring and teaching us so that we could come here to this podcast and learn right along with you. So with that, Christy, let's go ahead and let's uh, close this pod class out in prayer um, before we officially wrap it up. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much, Lord. Thank Thank you you for your word. Yes. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for just you being God and being God by yourself. Lord, thank you for teaching all of us more about how to worship you to bring you glory yes lord lord just thank you thank you thank you we truly do worship you in spirit and in truth you are the one true and only god yes and we bow down and honor you so thank you lord thank Thank you lord thank you lord (laughs) we thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you're going to continue to do and we just celebrate who you are in our lives We love you and we praise your name. In the name of your holy matchless son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 So once again, thank you so much for joining us on today's pod class. Uh, If you want to continue to connect with us, there's several ways that you can do it. You can look us up on Facebook. We do have a private group uh, that you can find. Just search for uh, Ladies in Waiting. Uh, You can join us on Facebook. We also have a website, liwministries.com. And then if you want to really go deeper with us, feel free to send us an email at our email address, which is ladiesinwaiting03 at gmail.com. And we can tell you about a group that meets together monthly via um, video conferencing. Uh, And so we come together once a month. We have uh, prayer time, study time, um, and really, you know, are growing uh, together with the Lord. So if yes. you're looking for something even more deep, just email us at ladiesinwaiting 3 at gmail.com. So thank you once again, everybody. And we'll see you on the next pod class. Take care, everybody. Be blessed. Bye. Bye. And remember to be a servant who leads the way. Thanks, everybody.